I'm definitely good at volunteering other people for hard work. It's my job, I'm supervising. And so I'm gonna start this out with, I was shopping around for just small pieces of brain, actual brain tan, either elk hide or, or buffalo or, nah, probably not too thick, or white-tailed deer. And there is a distinct lack of people nowadays, probably a lot less than 20 years ago, I'd say, that are preparing brain tanned um, leather. And so that's an opportunity. You know, we've got the discipline of bow making and arrow making and stone tool making, but there's definitely a lack of um, people out there making brain tanned leather. So think about it. Think about it. You know, you can get upwards of three hundred dollars for a full deer hide that's been brain tanned that's a lot of work but if you were to do multiple at a time you know it might not be like a month long process let's just say that do a couple um this side of six hundred dollars in your pocket you're doing a community service really and you might even be getting more if you're selling pieces you know i want a a handle for my bow, an organic one, brain tanned. You know, who's who's to say that you might not be able to get like $30 for, you know, a five inch by five inch piece, which, just saying. Okay, you saw me pounding tendons. I've thrown out that million dollar idea a couple days ago. And now those tendons in the way of sinew are on a bow. And I did it not my usual way of course I, I used kind of a a lesser glue mixture so i didn't have to have it hot over a, a boiler i just heated on the the stove my little double boiler pot even though i never boil it it's a misnomer i can set it on my cardboard piece work in the living room take a a good size bundle out of 10 tendons i might get a well, maybe 10 bundles, you know, the standard way would be have a whole bunch of little bundles, dip them and stick them on the bowl. But I take one of my bigger bundles, let it soak for a while. It can, it can soak in there for five minutes because I'm not like a bundle at a time. Take my finger, hook it out, peel off as much as I need for an application bundle, and then repeat. When I run out of that, I just take another of the bigger bundles and put them in there. Well, anyway, I didn't prepare all of them at once. So I had to do it in four sessions, four sessions, go out and work after I covered a portion of the bowl, come back in, take a break, drink some coffee, what have you, a Red Bull. Red Bull gives you hangs. You can't say wings with one eye because people out there will think, look at it, I almost slipped into a rant. People out there will be dumb enough to think that Red Bull allows you to fly, so they'll do a Peter Pan off a skyscraper and then sue Red Bull. What have we become, McGee? But anyway, just saying, I didn't do it all in one session over the course of morning till night, so it was easy. It was pleasant. It was enjoyable. I didn't wrap my bows. I didn't wrap this bow. I wanted to see the bumpy nature of the sinew. Can you see? Hopefully you can see this. This is on that sugar maple bow. And this is, I don't believe, going to be the permanent hand wrap. I just did it just for the fun of it. I'd rather have brain tanned. And I've got an email into a fellow that actually does it. Can I buy a small piece for a couple balls? But yeah, this worked out nicely. I didn't worry about having nice, neat edges. I didn't worry about having, like, bumps and hills and valleys. It works. You know, I keep preaching about how easy sinew backing is wanted to do a bow that was more natural that wasn't fussy that didn't require like all this experience to make a perfectly smooth layer and nice neat edges but it's beautiful in its own way nice sugar maple this is going to be so nice and uh i had a little glimpse into it when i'm apparently sugar maple absorbs glue nicely a lot easier than osage um, but when I was sizing this, I could see that beautiful, like, uh, feathery grain of maple. So I'm looking forward to the belly once it's completely finished being just tray chic. But yeah, that's about it. I did 
accomplished one difficult task this morning. Now I'm waiting for the UPS guy to deliver an electric utility cart. Yes, I'm a gasoline guy, but, you know, uh, if I'm going to have something to deliver dirt, it'll be nice not having to worry about winterizing it, breaking down. It's just a, a motor and a battery, so I went that way. And uh, later on, I'm going to negotiate with a neighbor over Beach because his boundary line is like at this huge weird angle. And I'm going to say, I'll give you a little bit of ours if I can have some of yours to straighten it out. Because some people are confused by angles. Not everyone is as smart as you and I. I know. But if you've ever worked in the tourist trade, you realize that not everyone is a genius. Not everyone behaves. And so you have to make it simple. Simplify things. So rawhide, bows, beautiful weather. Oh, and once I negotiate with the neighbor, then it's time to dig holes in frozen, sandy, rocky clay. Oh, joy. But that's physical. That's not like administrative stuff. So we're there. I think I covered it all. Oh, last bit. If you were in Canada, the great country of Canada, some people call it Canada, um, the residents, Canucks, Canadians, Canadians. If you are into primitive bows and you've seen you back and you have a source for buying tendons, could you please tell us? Please put it in the comment section because even though Canada is like this amazing sportsman's paradise, like all the wilderness and the hunting and the fishing, a gorgeous country, you know, it seems like for primitive bow supplies, it's not as open as the U.S. I mean, we could... We could buy tendons all day long from all sorts of sources, off of eBay, off of, you know, Three Rivers, Pine Hell Longbows, all sorts of places, but it seems to be more difficult in Canada. So do a do a, a friend a favor here and put down if you have sources for that. And if you're in Canada, you know, again, just like brain tan leather, that's an opportunity. If there aren't primitive bow making supply places out there that is an opportunity for you don't look at the negative as a negative all the time look at it as an opportunity as Cartman would say an opportunita respect my authority that in uh yeah yeah anyway 